Hey folks, Scott Grove of GroovyMusicLessons.com here to show you another guitar that I got from Ray over at Grinning Elk Music Company. Um, the 1978 Ibanez uh, IC300. Okay, this was what they called their Carina finish. Is it made of Carina wood? No. Just like all the old um, 1976 and 75 um, ex destroyers, destroyers that look like the explorers and their uh, rock and roll seniors that look like the flying V and the ones that look like the moderns. No, they were not Karina, they're just colored to look like it. They are ash. Okay, so ash. This was the only color that was available on the IC 300s in 1978 and 1979, were the only two years they issued them in 1978, such as this one. They built 91. In 1979, they made 46. Okay, and that was it for the IC300. So all the ones that came later uh, that were imports from Indonesia or Korea or whatever, um, never from Japan. These are Japanese, of course. It was the only place they made them back then. These, this was the one, the only color you could have it in. Okay, so you have your basic volume, volume, tone, tone, right there. A lot of these usually broke for the output jack. It's not an input jack, it is an output jack. Learn the difference. <laughs> okay, strap buttons on the back and the back instead of underneath like they did on the Paul Stanley models and on your versions of your isomers that a lot of you have. So again, that is Ash, not Karina. It's just the finish is called Karina. Okay, because it's just that color. Okay, there you go. Da, 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 da. And what do we have here? A three piece maple neck, rosewood, great tuners. The, I think they were valve tune. See the little screws there? The thumb wheels right here on the sides of the tuners. You use that instead of having to do a screw to adjust how the tension on your tuners. Amazing tuners. That idea never should have went away. This was made in, this was probably one of the first ones, being that they came out in 78, and the first letter on the serial numbers tells you when these were made. As you can see, this is an A, then 78, so it was made in January of 78. February would be B, March would be C, and April would be D, and on and on. Okay, uh, might as well show you the back while I'm here. Da -da -da -da. There's the way the neck is, no bolt-on stuff. Okay, the only ones that were bolt-on back then were the IC 100s. The 100 BK meant black, and the 100 BK meant white. Here's the 1978 ICB, or IC 100 BK. So here's from the exact same year. Um, Da, 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 da. bolt on and it has the letter H A B C D E F G H which gives me the eighth month which makes it August um, I believe if not don't kill me but you can count it up so there's the 78s um, some of the coolest ones I think just 78 was just the year for the Iceman and the one more time, real quick before I let you hear the guitar. The Ibanez, is, I think they were Velve Tune tuners. Just a cool guitar. Has the volute right here. So your neck won't break as easily. Like the Les Paul will every single time you knock it over. Um, superb guitar you have. Your Gibraltar and your quick change bridge and tailpiece, your Super 80s flying finger pickups, which they most of them used. Um, you had the IC210, which had the triple coil right here, which Steve Miller used. Okay, speaking of Steve Miller, let's just go to the clean sound, both pickups on, everything on the guitar dimed, meaning wide open. <laughs> Steve Miller. Now let's actually get down and see the guitar instead of my ugly mug. It's not what you're here for. 
Okay, so... Okay, there I'm going to the bridge pickup. That's still on the clean channel, it just overdrives it when I um, kick down my Morley volume pedal. So, great. I know I use a lot of reverb, but um, there's the bridge. Um, just great sounding classic rock and roll sounds. If you want to go to distortion on the bridge pickup. Oh, hey, Pat Benatar, there's what we need. It metal so it sounds like let me turn off the airplane down there um, so it's metal it sounds like your fretted notes which is a beautiful thing that's the way a nut should be made right there and unless it's a roller nut then even better but so you have the brass again to give you the metallic tone of the frets so all your open notes sound like your fretted notes but then the bone behind it actually gets rid of the um, bright shrillness that a metal nut can uh, provide so it stops all that behind it okay so it just gets rid of any of that excess leftover metallic ring that you might have beyond the brass nut and the brass nut actually is a little bit softer material which gives you a mellower tone um, slightly than your steel frets these are medium jumbo frets, uh, very small fret markers on the sides, okay, can hardly see them, but they are there, of course dots here, um, strangely, of course the uh, catalogs are always wrong, it says it had the big parallelogram inlays on the fretboard, but of course they never did, um, but the models lower than this did, so the other one I showed you, the black one, doesn't have them, but everything above it except for this model all have the nice big cool inlays on the neck but they kept it simple and beautiful on this axe um, any other sounds yeah let's just go to um, you haven't heard the neck sound clean <laughs> Are both again clean. Um, everybody gets tired of that song for sure. Hey.
Okay, got to give one to Wayne and Garth so they're not denied. Okay, so that's it. Uh, let's go to one other sound just because I love this sound called my boner tone in the neck position. Um, again, through the Johnson JM150 modeling amp. No, no tube amps today. Why? Because they sound like crap. I've got them here. You've heard them. Junk. <laughs> So again, a quick review of the 19, uh, or 1978 Ibanez Iceman, the IC300. Again, that's the only color they offered it in the Karina finish, not Karina wood. Again, it's ash, three-piece maple neck, rosewood fingerboard, Super 80 pickups, Gibraltar, quick change, valve tune. Um, what else can you say? Um, it's just a classic, classic axe. Um, let's unplug it, take a quick look at it. Uh, you can see the grain, which is amazing. The neck joint here, very smooth. Um, kind of a 60s feeling neck. It's not huge like a 50s Gibson neck would be. There's your neck pitch. Okay. Again, this had a major scratch right across here when I got it. Boom, let's put the headlights on it. Right across here, all the way across, nice and deep. Use my new um, scratch remover. It was gone instantly. It's the first guitar I tested it on. Instantly gone. Now it's perfect. They were telling me over Grinning Elk, well, this one has, you know, a couple scratches on it, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no problem. This stuff works great. So, and it does, and it's Perfect again, not a scratch on the guitar. So beautiful stuff. The things, the stuff dreams are made of. I used to sit around in high school, look at this guitar in the uh, 78 catalog, and say, "Someday, you will be mine." And it took 30 flipping years. Yep, this is the year of my 30th uh, class reunion. Comes up in September. Class of 83. So, what an amazing axe, and I haven't really seen one of these on YouTube, so this will be a document for that, which is why I do all this other than the tax write offs. But um, for those of you who will not see such things, these are, um, as far as vintage guitars go, I know it's not that vintage being a 78, but they really, really made them then. Ibanez had their shit together back then. Okay, today, no. <laughs> uh, they basically, in my opinion, for whatever that is, worth to any of you, lost it after 1984. Is when everything became crap. I just really haven't played a good Ibanez since 84 or since 83 actually, but eight by 85 for sure everything was junk even if it came from Japan other than the PS10s, they really spent some time on those you know a couple of signature models are fine and dandy but the production stuff just horrible then outsourcing usually kills everything but Japan, 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 they sure know how to make guitars okay so if you ever get a nice one Go for the ones made in Japan. Just can't beat them. Once again, Scott Grove, Groovy Music Lessons, uh, dot com. Go there, get all the free lessons you want. Check out all my guitars that I've had over the last seven years. There's reviews on every single one of them. You don't have to look them up here on YouTube. Uh, they're all categorized by brand name and just get right through. It just says guitar reviews, you know, and it's nice and easy. And every video I've ever done is actually on there and categorized nice so you can't miss anything. Tips on everything guitar related. So, 
Super X. Couldn't be more proud. Once again, thanks, Ray. Over at Grinning Up Music over in Georgia. Um, another huge Kiss fan. Gave me a great deal on this one. What I paid for this? Um, 20 700 I think. Uh, original hard shell case and even the original um, all the crap that came out, the, every, you know, how to work on your guitar, adjust your truss rod, you know, the old catalogs and everything all came with it. So they sell some of the cleanest guitars around and they were about the most honest people around too. Um, so you can believe everything they tell you when you're getting an axe from Ray over there at Grinning Elk. Um, they don't call me unless they have something superb or that they know I can fix with my scratch remover. <laughs> okay, so there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. Y'all take care. Uh, don't drink and drive. You might spill something. Talk to you later. Bye.